fire is actually quite powerful when it comes to this kind of thing, using two rail sweeps, um, being able to use a shape creation, um, using our sheets feature. Hi everybody, welcome to Vetric User Group Meeting 2023. I'm Randy Johnson, and in this session, I'm gonna show you how I use the vCarve software to create a type of carving referred to as CNC chip carving. It's actually an adaption of traditional authentic hand chip carving, which has been around for centuries or even longer, which is done with a knife and of course by hand. As you can see in the picture, the chip carving has a look very similar to V carving. And so several years ago, I started adapting it to for CNC as well. There are a few differences, but first of all, I just want to mention that there are a ton of books out there on chip carving. I have several in my library and I've referenced them many times as I learned chip carving the traditional way. And then as I went and converted chip carving into CNC chip carving, I also referenced them again because a couple things that the books really have to offer. One is a lot of design how-to. They'll show you how to lay out the design, the grid work, the patterns. Of course, there's the carving how-to if you want to give it a shot by hand, but we'll use the V-carving tool pass for that. But they also often come with project patterns or project ideas, which are easily converted into a V-carving for the CNC. Uh, as I mentioned, there are lots of books out there and they cover all different kinds of topics on different types of projects and chip carving has been applied to a wide variety of uh, different kinds of woodworking. So I encourage you, if you want to learn more about chip carving, pick up a couple of books, study the design aspects of it. Uh, you could, uh, many of them come with free patterns built in there that you're able to redraw and V-carve and then do the carving within V-carve. Now, there are a couple of differences when it comes to traditional chip carving versus V-carve CNC chip carving. Traditional hand chip carving, one of the big advantages of using the knife is it allows for variable angles, as you can see in the picture here. Some of those shapes on that book cover, you can see uh, the angle varies from the different sides to different angles. You also could do some double carving, which is difficult or nearly impossible to duplicate on the CNC. However, on the CNC, you are limited to the angle of the bit, whether it's 90 degree or 60 degree, which are the two bits that I most commonly use. And even though you're limited with those angles, you can still create some really nice designs using V-carve and cutting it with your CNC, as you can see in this picture here. Now, a couple of things that sets chip carving apart from other types of V-carving, and this is kind of my definition, but one is the repetition of pattern. That really simulates the look of traditional chip carving. So if you wanted to have that traditional look. Another one is no flat depth. As those of you familiar with V-carve, you know you can set a flat depth if the bit is cutting too deep. Well, one of the limits I place on myself uh, when I do a design to simulate hand chip carving as much as possible is I have a no flat depth rule. So if my V-bit is cutting too deep where it's going to cut through the material, then I split the design up into smaller shapes to create that repetition of pattern, as you can see here. So those are just two general uh, rule of thumbs that I apply to my chip carving. Uh, in fact, talking about applying chip carving, you can even do it in the round if you have a rotary setup. And it's pretty impressive on something like that for like a handle or a candlestick or, or some similar project. The building block of CNC chip carving is the triangle. And there's various shapes of the triangle. You see three of them here. They can be skewed even many more ways. Sometimes the sides can be uh, curved. So really it's unlimited. But the triangle it creates this building block for basic traditional chip carving, which then can be combined, rotated into a grid work to then create an overall chip carving pattern. You could also combine different types of triangles, some asymmetrical triangles with some standard right triangles and combining those around the shape will also add some interest. So again, another type of triangle, another building block. 
Another shape that I often incorporate into my chip carvings, I refer to as a fan shape. And it could be triangular such as this, or it may even be have some curves to it. But as you can see here, it can be added to the corner of a design, or if you duplicate it four times around, it'll create a nice diamond shape for the middle of your project. Scallops are another shape that are often used as a motif within chip carving, whether it's the fan type shape you see, or like a scallop shell, or just the crescent shape. You can see the design in the picture here, how much of that design is developed out of just using these scallop shapes. So I'll have a couple of those in my design that I'll, that I'll repeat if that's the imagery or the style that I want to create. Another one is the basic petal shape or leaf shape. And this is an example how that petal shape was stretched, repeated, scaled up, scaled down, outlined, rotated. And the whole design here is basically made up of that single petal shape. So it's important when you're designing, think of the simple patterns, the triangles, and some of these other motifs, and then you learn how to repeat them. And as you practice these, you start to create your own designs. Uh, most of what I do now are just create my own designs as opposed to duplicate something, and making it very custom to fit the project you're working on. And from there, your projects can develop, and they, they appear very complex uh, at the end with lots of detail, but because it's V-carving, it carves fairly quickly. And also the layout of these goes fairly quickly as well. I spent probably about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour and a half on each design. And once you get some practice in it, uh, it'll go fairly quickly as well. And they can be very traditional in appearance, something like on the left, or you can go more contemporary, something like what you see there in the right. Now within V-carving, these are some of the main tools I use. Uh, you probably have used lots of these already, but some of these tools lend themselves to doing the CNC chip carving designs because they're built in for the alignment tools, the rotate tools, the copy tools, the offset tools. All these tools are some of them that I, most, that I use uh, frequently when doing a CNC chip carving design. Another thing that's worth pointing out, as I mentioned, the triangle is the basic building block of doing a single cell of traditional square form chip carving. In this case, I use increments of somewhere between a quarter inch to a half inch for my triangle size. Now that's totally variable. Some triangles end up much larger, some go a little bit smaller. Uh, but I find that this size visually works well on things like jewelry boxes and the sides of small cabinets and such. Um, and of course here, you can start with a simple triangle. It can then be rotated four times. And then those four triangles can then be carved with the V-carving toolpath. That produces this knife edge on the top edge you see there by the red arrow, which is very traditional type of appearance for chip carving. Typically, the craftsman doing it by hand, the real skill here is that that knife goes right along that edge, goes along the side, along the other edge, and out comes this triangular chip of wood. But to get that ridge nice and straight does require a lot of hand skill. Within CNC, I have found that this ridge, this knife edge, sometimes chips out when I go this route. So I've actually adapted a new style for my own work, which uh, I find works well. I actually had a little flat on that area. And the standard that I use is 0.03. It's a little over, you know, it's about a 32nd of an inch. And I'll sometimes increase that to 0 0.05 and maybe go a little smaller, but I'm usually in that 0.03 to 0 0.05 range for that flat edge. What I like about it is, first of all, at the CNC, it prevents that knife edge from chipping out. And secondly, it actually adds a little flat area that helps to reflect the light and increase the interest to the design. And like I said, it's just kind of become my style for what I do chip carving. And here you can see the whole grid, wood put to, grid work put together. Uh, you can see how that little flat area adds a little more light reflection on that surface and kind of makes the triangle carving stand out even a little bit more, I feel. One other detail I like to add to a grid work such as this, and you'll see me use this along the way, 
is a small v-groove detail around the edge and again i found that about a tenth of an inch for that seems to work well with either a 90 degree bit or a 60 degree bit but it kind of frames the setup now as i mentioned earlier design time on most of these projects like a jewelry box lid or a little novelty box of some sort is about an hour plus or minus you know half hour maybe and cutting time also is about 15 to 30 minutes it goes pretty quick because all the designs you see here it's a single bit setup whether it's the 45 or the 90 degree or the 60 degree it just takes one bit to do the cutting now a couple of things i've learned about the type of wood is that a tight grain wood works best. So I, I prefer cherry, maple, walnut. Those are three of the woods I commonly use. Uh, sometimes pine, but pine can be iffy because of some of the grain is real soft, some is really hard. Uh, surprisingly, basswood, which is the traditional wood for hand chip carving, does not work very well for V carving because bad wood, basswood tends to get really fuzzy when you carve it with a v-bit i've tried it several times and this is true of several different types of wood so you'll have to experiment a little bit because even some types of say cherry or walnut you can get a piece of cherry or walnut for which for some reason when you're cutting it on the cnc it just wants to fuzz up so uh, even within the same species you get some of that fuzzing but basswood in particular even though that is the traditional wood for hand chip carving I found it does not work very well for C and C. So with that, let's go ahead and hop into the software demo. And I'm going to do an actual design for you uh, with the remainder of this session. I have a file already set up here and prepped with some motif sentence, some design elements that I frequently use. This is something that I'll often do when I start a file, just bring over uh, previous file that I've worked on save out some of the elements that I like uh, two reasons one is it saves design time I can copy them into my design it's also a visual reminder of the kinds of elements I might like to use that I've used before for this project I'm going to use set it's set up at 10 inches by 10 inches which is a average size for many of the projects that I carve I'm setting the Z at the surface, of course, because that's the best place to set the Z when you're doing V carving. And then I'm putting the XY datum to the center of the project. I highly recommend this because when it comes time to do rotation or diameters, it's really nice to work off the zero datum at the middle. And you'll see this as I lay out the design. I'm always able to reference that middle point of my project and keep everything nicely centered. So for this design, I'm going to do a circular design in the middle of this, and then we'll do a border around the outside. So to start out with, I'm just going to create a simple circle in the middle. Let's set up the center point at 0, 0, and let's give it a diameter of 1 inch and click on Create. And there we have our circle right in the middle. Now I want to divide the circle up kind of like a pie shape. So I'm going to take my draw, create line tool, zoom in on this. And then I have my snaps up above here. I have my smart snap as well as my geometric snap. And I'm going to click at the top and at the bottom, hit the space bar to break that line, and then close out of that. I have this single line and then I'm going to use that line and go into the circular copy tool. I want to set up the rotation center to zero, zero. It's already there, so we're okay with that. I want three copies of that line because I'm going to rotate that all the way around. That'll end up giving me six pie shapes. So let's group those copies, or actually let's ungroup those copies and click on copy. And there we have our six pie shapes or, tri or triangular shapes. I'm good with that. Next, I'm going to add, as I showed earlier, how I like to have a space between each of my triangles. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that group of lines, go into my offset tool, and I've got it set up to go to both sides 
I'm going to set it up at 0 0.015 and that way my finish distance between the two lines will actually double that because it's going to put a line on both sides of that. Let's go ahead and just look at that and there you can see how with the going to both sides my space between the two black lines here is 0 .3, 0 0.03 which is what I want. Now I'm going to undo that with control Z and I'm going to check the delete original because I do not need those lines once I create my offsets. So there we have the double lines. I'm going to create this outer border and do the same with that. And now I have created that. Now what I'm interested in here is the these inner triangles. And there's a couple ways I can clean this up. One is I can go in and I can take my trim tool and I can trim out and clear out all of those spots. And that works just fine. And this is a pretty small design. So I could easily do that if I wanted to go around and trim all that out. The other option I have is I could select everything, hold the shift key down, deselect that single pie shaped triangle and hit delete on the rest. Then select it again Go back to my circular copy tool, increase my number to six, make sure the rotation center is set up at zero and zero. There you can see with the little double circle there. And then let's group the copies this time and click copy. And it's that quick and easy to get a nice group of triangles. So you've got a couple options there on how to trim those or, or create those six but that'll get that first part set up. Let's go ahead and jump over the tool paths for a minute. And I've got a couple tool paths set up in here already. Let's highlight the V-carve one, select our first part of the design, calculate that, and preview it. And so there you see what that looks like. I like to go back and forth to the preview frequently as I'm doing the design work, just to make sure proportions and everything is carving correctly and to catch any errors along the way. So let's go back to 2D. Next, let's add a larger circle around this. I'm going to add something. Let's go in here and grab the middle of this right here. That's where we're going to start it again. So our center point is 0, 0. And let's give it a diameter of 3.5. That looks like a good size. Okay, from here now, I'm going to add some of these designs I have over in the side. Let's add this guy right here. Put it right there. We'll come back and scale it if we have to. And then let's get this crescent scallop shape. Grab one right there. Let's grab the... Let's back up a second on both those. Rather than drag them in, I'm going to take and hold the control key down and copy it in there. That way the original remains in its place. So again, hit the control key, left click and drag. Grab that one, drag that over. Okay, let's zoom in and do a little scale work on this. First thing I want to do is to make sure that's centered on the drawing. So I'll click on my alignment center and that just clicks it over a little bit. Let's take and bring that down a little closer. And let's center that one as well. Center this larger one. And then let's select all those. And let's go back into the circular copy tool. And we're going to do the same six rotation. Now we always have to make sure and make sure our rotation center is set up at zero. And let's go ahead and try this. Okay, the small one looks pretty good, but I'm not interested in having those large ones overlap. So let's undo that. Let's grab this one and let's resize this one. Let's go into the set size tool. And let's take that down to about one and an eighth wide. And let's 
maybe make it just a little bit taller. See how this looks. I like that shape. Let's just check this. I want it to be a little bit smaller too. So let's make the width of that one 0.6 and let's make the height half that 0.3. Okay, that looks pretty good too. Now let's take and bring those down a little bit. Bring this one up just a little closer. Maybe break that up just a little bit. Let's highlight those three and rotate those around the center again. Make sure the rotation center is set at zero. Okay, we're still a little bit large on that, but here's something we could do. Let's take and move this one up. And let's move this one up. And we might even be able to increase the height of this a little bit. Let's see how big this is. Yeah, let's make that a little bigger. Let's go up to about... Uh, let's scale that, both the X and the Y. There we go. We'll fill that space in with this plant shape. And now we'll rotate these three again. And there you see what happens when you don't have the center point. Very interesting design, but it's not going to work for, for this. So I need to undo that, set my center point at zero, and click again. There, now the points aren't touching. That layout, I like that. We'll stick with that. Close out of that. Let's go back into our tool path. Hold the shift key down, and let's add that new group of vectors. And let's preview that, how that adds to it. It's looking pretty good. Let's go back again. Now I'm going to add one of those little V dividing lines I mentioned earlier. So I'm simply going to select that circle, go into the offset tool, go outward, and let's add that tenth of an inch offset like that. I'm going to select this one, and now I'm going to add another little border, but this time I'm going to use that 0 0.03, that's one of my standard dimensions, before I set my next group of uh, shapes. So let's add that little bit of spacing, and then let's go and add a half inch to that. Let's hit select new on this one. There's a half inch. And then let's go 0 0.03 again. And so there, we've got a double band there now for our next group of triangles. I'll put triangles inside this shape. But before we go any further, let's take, and again, let's add in that V-groove border that I added, those two lines. See how that looks? And there you can see that circle adds a nice detail around the outside. Okay, now within this band, which I made about a half inch wide, we're going to add some triangles, much like what we did in the pie shape, but it'll be out of that area. So to start with, I'm going to add a straight line from here to here. Click off, it snapped in there. And then I'm going to use the rotate tool. And let's use coordinates. And again, zero, zero, so it rotates on the middle of our shape. And then let's rotate that five degrees and click apply. That looks good. Now I want to mirror that image. So I use the mirror tool. And in this case, I want to mirror it about the job center, which is another convenient reason to have your XY data in the middle. And I'm going to create a mirrored copy. So let's go flip horizontal. And that's a good looking shape size wise. So that's a total of 10 degrees in there. So let's now divide that up a bit. Let's click up here to this corner. 
And then let's select those three lines. And I'm going to go back to my offset and delete originals 0 0.015. Again, you'll some of these numbers you'll start seeing me use frequently because these are my standards. Click offset. And now again, it's just these inside triangles that I'm interested in. So let's trim out everything else just like this. Let's trim out between here. Get rid of that top edge. Actually, I want to back up something here. Let's back all the way up. There. I want to keep that outer circle because I'll be using that for part of my next design. So let's just save that for now. Let's just click off like that. Get rid of that edge. Go over here and clean up that edge and down around here at the bottom. Okay, something I like to do before I go any further is that although these appear to be nice triangles, sometimes these joints won't always close up. So I usually highlight those, go to the Join tool, and it shows me I have two closed vectors. And that's exactly what I want. If I had an open vector, I'd have to go in there and solve that problem. Okay, now that I have those, I'm going to hit the G key to group those. Go back to the Rotate tool. Use the coordinates of 0, 0 again because I want this to be... See, there's the center point right now. But notice when I hit the Tab key on my keyboard, that center point jumps down right there to the XY datum, which is where I want it. Now, relative rotate rotation. Let's rotate that to 5 degrees that we had earlier. And that'll rotate it like that. Now, I don't want the same style of triangle all the way around. I want to do a mirror image of this. So I simply go into my mirror tool and I flip horizontal again. And now we have a mirrored pair. Now I'm going to select those, hit the G key to group those. So now those are grouped. Now I can go in and rotate all the way around again. So in this case, because I have 20 degrees total going into 360, that's 18 copies that I need. Set up my center of rotation at zero. Let's click copy, and there it is. It's that quick. Now it looks like I lost my other line here. So let's go back in here and offset that line again. Outward to point 0.1. And there, now we have that all set up. Close out of that. Let's preview our toolpath again. Select all those. Actually open it up first and select everything. Click Calculate. Let's reset this and see what it looks like. And it's like, oops, something doesn't look right. My center pie shape, everything seems to got reversed. This is something that'll happen if, and I did this purposely to show that, but if you add this extra line out here, that's going to reverse the copy uh, where it's going to carve the toolpath. So let's deselect that single line, recalculate, now reset, and now it's carving in the correct area. So this is another reason why I like to preview frequently is to make sure that the vectors I have in my drawing um, are the ones that are actually going to create the, the chip carving design that I want. With so many lines going on it can, and all these concentric circles going on, it can be easy to lose track of them. And once you get your whole design done, it's going to be kind of tough sometimes to figure out which one is causing the problem. So it's better to build it in stages like this. All right, next we're going to add yet another line to this. Let's offset this one. And this time rather than a half inch, let's go a full inch on that offset. So for this offset, I want one inch. And let's offset that for the next border. And then again, let's I'll select that one. And let's add the 0 0.03 to the outside of that. 
And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a straight line from the top down to this one. And then I'm going to go into the rotate tool and I'm going to use the coordinates of 0, 0, rotate it to 5 degrees, close out of that, go into the mirror tool, flip that across the horizontal. I've got flipped about job center, create mirror copy. Same as I did before. And then I'm going to go in and draw from quarter to quarter. From here to there. Select those three. Go into the offset. Set it up to both. Set the offset to 0 0.05. Delete the original and click Offset. Then I'm going to go in and trim some of these lines away. Again, I'm going to leave that outer circle. And I don't need that one or that one. And then this one I can get rid of and this corner down here. Get that little bit off. And then let's go up here and trim this one. And I don't need that one. Trim the corners off. Get it all cleaned up. Let's just double check something here again. Let's go back into the Join tool. And again, we have two closed vectors. That's good news. Okay, just like I did before. And as you can see, there's a lot of repetition here. This is why the design work, once you get into the uh, flow of things, it goes fairly quickly. Let's rotate this back again. Let's go five degrees like that. And then once again, we'll go inside the mirror option, flip that. That looks good. Okay, now these are getting to be fairly large. This is an inch tall, and I know that's going to carve deeper than I want it to cut uh, go. So I want to break that up a little bit. And one way I do that is I'm going to add a couple of horizontal lines in there before we go any further. To do that, I'm going to get the circle, click on the center, and stretch out. And let's see, let's stretch this one out to probably about almost halfway up on it, something like about right there. And then let's do another one and go a little further about right there. Okay, now to that I then can trim those away like that. Then I'll go in and once again I'll get my offset tool using that double offset. Let's delete the original. Okay, now what I want to do with this design, because I want to mix things up a little bit, I'm going to save the top half of this triangle like that, and the bottom half is going to be split. Oh, too much. Let's control Z on that. Do that. Right there. So I got that bottom half. I'll do the same over here. And get rid of that. And get rid of those. Now, I'm going to save the lower half of the triangle on this middle section, so it'll go like this. And then the top half is what I'm going to split. So now we have that set up. Now I want to mix this up even a little bit further. So I'm going to actually delete these. Not that much. Oh, look, see right there, there's a connection line. So I need to remove that. And it did too much. So let's see what's going on. Let's try it again. Okay, so this is something that happens sometimes. It'll delete the whole object. So in a case like that, I go into Node Edit with the N key, and I can see that. Let's grab that and see. Okay, so that is that section. That looks good. Sometimes, 
Okay, there's a little bit of a trib spot there. Let's try tribbing off that little bit. Okay, that's gone. And you see that one's not connected. So that's the problem right there. So let's hit the end key and zoom in close. And I'm just going to drag that out. There we go. That'll work for that. And now I can trim that little piece. And I should be able to trim this connection off. There we go. So usually when you end up with it deleting too much, something's going on with the lines. Sometimes you can see that they're not touching like that one. And other times you can't really tell. So sometimes you have to break it up a little bit more and sometimes even redraw it. But usually you end up getting what you want after a couple of extra steps. Okay, now I now have that shape. Let's take and select all of that and group it. Go back in. We're going to do the same rotation setup as we did before. All becomes very repeat. There we go. Now I am going to, for ease, I want to add some design element inside here, but I'm going to rotate this back a little bit. So let's go back on that five degrees. Do it another five degrees. There we go. And let's build on, let's add another leaf model in there. So this little plant, let's add that little shape. And let's scale that down a little bit. Let's take that down to about height of four. And you know what? Let's make it a little bit wider. Let's unlink that. And let's make it maybe just... Let's go 0.4 wide also. That looks pretty good. Okay. Maybe just a little bit wide. I'm going to go back and I'm going to just shrink that down just a little bit. Let's go 0.3 on the width on that. There we go. Okay, now I can take that, go back into the rotation tool. Everything is all set up except the center point. Click copy. And once again, it's copied itself all the way around. So let's go back in, take a look at the V-carve setup. Again, we want to make sure to deselect that outermost line. Everything else there should be good. We'll click calculate. And let's reset and preview. And there it's coming together. Everything is carving out as planned. Let's go back to our main view here. Now I want to add another one of those little offsets of a tenth of an inch. So I'm going to go back in my offset tool outside 0.1. I have that. Okay, let's do a quick preview of that. Calculate that, preview, and there we've added the nice little detail ring around the outside. Okay, now I'm ready to go and add some extra detail to my, I'm going to add a border around this next. So for that, I'm going to use a shape like this one right down here. And that triangle is created much the same way as all the rest. And I'm going to use this tool here called Copy Along Vectors. So I need to create a vector first. So for that, I'm going to create a square in the middle, again, using the center point as the anchor point. Make that 8 by 8 and click Create. Now, I know that this setup I have here is built on a half-inch block, including the space in between it. So I could use that as a measuring amount to go all the way around. So a half inch into eight is, of course, going to be 16 times. And 16 times times four is 64. So let's use this copy along vectors. I'm going to select the object to copy, followed by my vector to follow. And I've set it up here at 64 copies. Click Copy. And it spins it all the way around. Let's go ahead and select all those. If 
but not our line in the middle. Let's group those together and let's view that. Okay, so we're getting this error message. I know what happened. If I look back here, I can see I picked up that line again accidentally. So I'll deselect that. Click Calculate. Preview. And there's the beginning of our border. Okay, so now let's go and take that line and offset this line by a quarter inch to give us a, another border line. So let's go 0.25, select the new, and that gives us right out here at the outside edge. Let's offset that one by 0.015. And let's delete the new one. There we go. And then we'll go the point one from there. And this one I no longer need, so I can delete that. And one other thing I'm going to add to this is let's add some motifs in the corner, some uh, Use this star flower shape up here. Actually, let's use the next one. Maybe this larger one will work. That looks like that fits pretty well. Now to position this nicely, I go inside the Move Selected Object tool, and I'm going to do an absolute setting to the center. And let's even this out at exactly 3, negative 3 in the Y, and positive 3 around in the X and positive 3 in the Y. That just tweaks a little bit, a little bit. So now I can take that and also use the copy tool and it's already giving me a rotation center of 0, 0. So I'm good there. Let's do four copies and spin those around. And there they are. Open up our tool path, calculate, reset, and let's preview everything. And there's the pretty much the completed design. The last thing I'm going to do on this is add a little chamfer to the outside. So let's go in and add another rectangle, and let's make this rectangle 9.5 by 9.5 and I have a chamfer toolpath already set up so I simply need to select that click calculate preview and we had a nice little bevel all the way around the edge so there that design work took about 35 minutes I know I moved along pretty quickly and I did have some of the designs already set up but that's part of the object. If you have some of the information already set up, you could go from some of those formats and then using some standard procedures of the copy, the rotate, the offset tools, and it all becomes pretty quick after a while. And you can create your own custom designs uh, and whatever added detail. Now, this is a fairly traditional looking chip carving that can be done on the CNC uses a 90 degree bit or a 60 degree bit. Uh, I typically use the, four, the 90 degree bit when the triangles are a little larger. If I get with smaller triangles, then I'll drop down to the 60 degree bit. And there's nothing to prevent you from mixing too. If for some reason I wanted these flowers to be the 60 degree bit, and the details in the middle to be 60 degree, but everything else to be 45 or 90 degree, that's fine. Then you could add two bits to the setup. But the, again, the bottom line is it goes fairly quickly to do the design work. It make, makes a nice, complex design for a surface. And the carving of it on the machine goes fairly quickly as well. Typically, like I said, around 15 to 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes for a pretty complex one. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, give it a try in some project you have coming up or just do a practice uh, shape and put it on your shop wall. This is Randy Johnson. I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions. Mm -hmm.